Donald, do you ever need help letting go of characters or settings you love? Like, you write this story, and it's great, but you just want to keep going, even though the plot doesn't call for it? No, actually. I've never dealt with that in my life. Really? You've never had difficulty letting go of your characters? Or a story idea? Not that I recall, no. Why do you ask? Well... Because this week, we at the Ritwit are sponsored by the newly devised Concept Latching Balloons. These specialized bits of rubber and helium latch onto your ideas you have trouble letting go, making it easy to do the deed of just letting them float off into the sky. These balloons are ready-made just for writers like you to aid in the... In the... Ah, this is so stupid! What? Balloons? Really? That's what we're selling this week? I, I mean, it sounds perfectly reasonable to me. It's utterly ridiculous. What, these balloons magically latch onto the intangible concepts of story or character ideas and carry them off like they're physical? Look, I've stayed quiet on a lot of crap we've sponsored at the Ritwit, like Squid Ink, Exposition Generators, and Cerebral Simulation Beans, but- Hey, don't you <laughs> dare lay a finger on those beans! Those are awesome! But this is just too far, Donald! Balloons cannot physically latch onto metaphysical concepts! If you let them go, they're going to fly off anyway! They don't latch onto anything! God, even preschoolers know this! I'm out of here! Let me know when this ad's over, I'll be back, but this ad is just- I'm just done. David, come back! We need the money from the spark! Oh, he's gone. Wow, out of all the dumb things we've sold, this is the one he walks out on? Uh, I swear, there's no appreciation for balloon culture anymore. <laughs> well, I suppose I'll have to do this myself. And hey, I guess that means I'll get all the money from the sponsor rather than splitting it with David, so yay! Okay, let's do this! These balloons are ready-made for riders like you to aid in the difficult process of letting ideas go when they need to be free. Whether you've just finished a story or attached to a dumb idea that should never see the light of celluloid, our sponsored concept latching balloons are ready to fly. But what about... Oh, wait. This ad has two parts, doesn't it? Uh, well... I can't impersonate David that well. Like, uh, <clears throat> uh, David, how are you? And then he's like, uh... I'm great, Donald. I love Power Rangers and Tokusatsu and don't like actually writing things. See? It's it's no good. I sound nothing like him. Ooh, I can do that whiny, high-pitched voice I always do. That's not overused at all. All right, back on track. <clears throat> Our sponsored concept latching balloons are ready to fly whenever you need to just let go. Wow, that sounds so cool, but I have so many ideas to let go! Will I ever have enough balloons? I'm glad you asked. So you have a sizable excess of ideas to let go, we also sell the balloons in bundles, alongside a helium tank, ready to be released at your whim whenever the time comes. You'll never be in short supply of our handy helium helpers. Wow, thanks! That sounds amazing! I'm getting the concept latching balloons today! Good to hear. And you can get them today too, listeners. The Ritwit sponsored concept latching balloons for all those ideas that are just hot air. Man, David was right. This was dumb. David, the ad's over. The big scary ad's over. You can come back now. You don't have to hide anymore. You think I was hiding? I wasn't hiding. You were, if anything, you were standing your ground, I guess. Like, no more. <laughs> like, I... Yep, I was taking a stand, drawing my line in the sand, calling it good. Anyway. Uh, that's one way to word it, yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, welcome fellow nerds to another episode of The Ritwit, the show where nothing stands in the way between our words and your ears. Except maybe common sense, or, or a dumb ad. <laughs> Or the door, because, you know, you had to yell for me to hear you through the well, door. Well, there's a anyway. lot of things, actually. This <laughs> simply doesn't quite hold up. Or not, it's a metaphor. What? I don't even know if it's that. I don't even think it is. I think it's just an act. Anyway, uh... <laughs> <laughs> we're we're writers, we guys, and I'm an English major. I should know this stuff, but I don't. Yes. No, uh, we're, we're back from the yes. uh, un unexpected vacation. There was an actual vacation. <laughs> yeah, no, let's, let's, we should let out a little bit of apology here. Yeah, sorry, listeners, for missing those last couple of weeks, but uh, stuff happened, and we... 
we were trying to record when I was on vacation, but uh, with my family. I had this room that was all uh, separated for everyone. It was great. The problem is the room was also right below the room where everyone else was. And then I could hear stomp, stomp, stomp. And the microphone did, in fact, pick up on it. So, and it would have been a pain in the ass to edit all those. So, we decided, <laughs> we decided to just, well, we'll do this another you time. You didn't have to, you didn't have to go at all the detail. I was willing to, per- I was perfectly content to say, he actually got a vacation for once. Can you forgive us? <laughs> I mean, both, neither one counteracts the other, so, because they both happen, so. Well, they both happen, but, like, you didn't need to go into that hyper specific Well, it, it's like, it's good plot. that, anyway, it's no, good it's for the good. listeners to know that even when I'm on vacation, I still try my best to, for, to work for this podcast. Now, granted, it sounds like I don't succeed, but I still try, and that's what matters, right? <laughs> Well, and it's not because you don't care about the podcast. It's because you don't care about going on vacation. <laughs> uh, I don't. There's a whole term for it, apparently. Agoraphobic. It's not necessarily... I thought that was just fear of open spaces, but it's actually just, like, fear of the unknown or, like, uncomfortableness with the unknown. Like, <clears throat> we like stability. We like, you know, everything to be the same. We don't like our routine to be was... ruined. <laughs> I, d- I didn't realize agoraphobia was so applicable to a bunch of different things. But anyway, because we are back, we finally get to do our usual segments, including, you'll find out next week, we're introducing a new one. I'm really excited about Oh, that's this. right. I forgot uh, about that. Oh, me and my goldfish brain. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it was it was one of those things that I thought it'd be cool, and having it implemented now is, you know, particularly like, hey, it's almost like a semi-apology, which right. kind of works. <laughs> anyway, not from that, but for the usual stuff, um, we're back. The Rit Wit Show, yes. where us two twits yes. talk about Rit. Hi, what's up? <laughs> nah, well, uh, the ceiling, the light, because oh, the so is good. strangely dark. That's today. that sense of humor I've missed this all these weeks. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just what you needed, right? More of me. All right, usual segments, starting with what will we rip off from this month? And you, David, have the honors of going first this time. Oh, well, thank you. I That's part of the reason why I was killing time to try and, you know, get you there. But yeah, anyway, of course. Well, we got uh, there eventually. Lots of, lots of catching up this month. Yes. Um, I suppose I should define what catching up means, though I should qualify that. It's My a condiment that you that put on sure. your hamburger. No, I'm sorry. Catching up is not catch up. <laughs> Although my dad, my, <laughs> my dad used to always I get say forever, cats right? up, which uh. always bothered me. <laughs> my dad always used to say cats up that bothered the crap out of me. Uh, anyway, that does uh, bad. So both on Japanese, both on Japanese stuffs like the original Sentai series, one called Himitsu Sentai Go Ranger, which translates as Secret Squadron Go Ranger, and Jaka, which for some ungodly reason, no, I know it's not an ungodly reason. It's spelled J A K Q, but to make Jacqua. that sound like an actual word, <laughs> they pronounce it Jaka. Dengeki Tai, which translates uh, Dengeki Tai in particular translates to Shock Troop or Blitzkrieg Squadron. Uh, I love those way, Germanic awesome words. Maybe. Like Blitzkrieg. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, but uh, Jacka because the playing card motif, because there was a playing card motif at work, it was Jack, Ace, King, Queen. Uh, the reason. I don't know why they chose that particular grouping. Maybe because it was the easiest to make into an actual, like, esque word. But yeah. anyways, um, both of those series actually weren't included in Super Sentai mm. until like the 90s because they lacked the giant robot component. Oh, well then they might as well not even bother, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess they weren't super at all. No anyway, giant robots, um, no super. That's just the rules. But but they did, but it finally for the first time, considering that these shows are you know over 40 years old now, and finally there is a way to download them, see them with English subtitles, which is really cool. Isn't the internet great? So we finally got to do that. Like the 21st yeah. century well, is great. I mean, like a lot of, I mean, in, a lot of crap has I'd been going on in, in the world. world. But like, I was over at a friend's house earlier today, and I was watching a YouTube video. I was showing it to them on my phone, but they're like, "Do you know you can press that button there, and that YouTube video will just transmit onto the TV here?" I'm like, "What?" And I did it, and sure enough, I'm like, "I love the 20, I love 2019 technology. It's so cool." Well, I tell you, I tell you what, for the technology, it's great living in this time that I do. But my values are of a generation before or five. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> um. No, the thing the thing is though that they're finally available, and so I 
got through them about as quickly as I could. Right. I did watch one with a very dear friend of mine who was a former roommate. Not my co-host here, Aww. but one of my co-authors. Oh, yeah. Um, I know him. Mr. Yeah, I'm not going to say Yeah, you know him. Yep. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> uh, we protect the innocent. Anyway. Mr. Uh, uh, Joel Egerton, so watch, right? Watch the, like, the star. I totally didn't hear what you said. I said uh, Joel Egerton. It was a joke. <laughs> Joel Egerton. <laughs> Sure, we'll go with that. And the reason Actually, why it's funny, we won't get been, into, but it is funny for a reason. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been remiss if you named like a Doctor Who actor because he is a fan of that show as well. Okay, that's a different story. Ah, well, so like Joel Smith or something. <laughs> yeah, that 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 would have been clearly obvious. That was a Doctor Who reference. Yeah, because <laughs> as we know, Smith is a well, very I mean, rare current... last name. <laughs> So so rare, you have no idea. But anyway, I watched Go Ranger alongside him. So it took us a, quite a while to get through this, but we did actually manage. And so my summer vacation from work, um, because they made me take time off. I worked oh, so horror. hard with this stupid. Uh, well, okay, get. I won't get into that because this is not the place for it. But uh, <laughs> part of but part of the reason I do bring up work is that it enabled me to take a trip to America with a bunch of uh, middle and high school students for a homestay program. And on international flights, you might know, uh, they happen to have lots of movies yes. on the plane. Yes. And so I got to catch up on superhero films from the West, like two featuring heroes at one time or another known as Captain Marvel. Yeah, I was going to say, the, right. the two movies you have on here are the Captain Marvels. Captain Marvel on the outbound flight and Shazam on the return. They yes. were both great fun. I like how the Shazam film threw literally everything at the wall, including a shoehorn for the adoptive kids to participate. If you've seen it, you'll know what I mean. Right. <laughs> Compared to the MCU outing being somewhat restrained about adding the kitchen sink right away and altering the source material to a notable degree. Right. So the collective lesson, aside from the issue with overworking, <laughs> right. don't assume anything is going to start a universe unless you have some legwork behind it. Captain Marvel, the Marvel variety, the Marvel has Captain enough story Marvel. to leg yes. out several solo... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lay out several solo outings in addition to being pinch hitter extraordinaire for the MCU going forward, whereas the erstwhile Captain Marvel, now called Shazam <laughs> over at DC, because right. this is not confusing at all, Yeah, right? you know it would be great fun if including... they allowed the DC Captain Marvel to still be Captain Marvel, but then Marvel created a character called Captain DC... Just unrelated. Or like Corporal or Corporal DC, just to be honorary. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> no. Anyhow, uh, fun romp, including some world building, but acts as the beginning of a new franchise entry rather than beholden to what came before. Though with the MCU film, I do have to note the setting being era separate does take away some limitations because yep, it it's the obviously 90s. doesn't happen concurrently with all of this stuff. Yes, you know? I mean, wait, are you saying that's not in the modern day? I thought, the, I thought when Captain Marvel, not all of it. I thought Captain Marvel crashed through that blockbuster. I'm like, oh yeah, it's the modern day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and she, she got had her to go to Radio Shack. Yeah, she to got, get she all got her stuff, stuff from Radio Shack and. They, they look stuff on the internet, and it took, like, a, a full 30 seconds to download, which is way faster than it actually should be Ever, in 95. Yeah. <laughs> like, way should be. <laughs> well, I, no. <laughs> I think, uh, back to your point about letting them play in the same sandbox, I think it'd be really funny if they allowed Shazam and Captain Marvel with and Shazam with the Captain Marvel name to be in a movie called Marvels. That'd be sh Oh, that, and hilarious. it'd be a DC that movie. That'd be so confusing. And it'd be... <laughs> <laughs> it never happened. But anyway, and then uh, and then uh, DC creates a character. No, 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 no. Marvel creates a character called Shazam, <laughs> just well, to make it further confusing. There was there's well, probably there's probably legal really reasons the why they can't there do that. There was another. But. There, there was, there was another movie called Shazam that starred Shaquille O'Neal. That's back. Kazam. That's <laughs> Kazam. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Kazam. <laughs> That's okay though. No. It's no, one of those uh, Mandela effect things. Film. Apparently a lot of people think that there's a movie called Shazam in the 90s that stars Sinbad as a genie. This movie does not exist. It is Kazam with Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> <laughs> oh with Sinbad as a genie? How the world did you get in there? You know, like the, um, the comedian anyway. Sinbad, like from the 90s. Uh, not the character uh, Sinbad. No. Anything. Not the like original character totally from 2001 Radio Nights. Nice. Although I understand the confusion. That's probably where it came from. <laughs> I, I, I've got nothing. Um, that that threw me off my game. But the point being, <laughs> you know, you can't... 
you cannot assume that something will birth a universe immediately. And even in, you know, culture today, we kind of see how everything is aiming for this big cinematic universe right. like Marvel did. But Marvel didn't start doing that. They didn't start having the big combining films until they had done a lot of legwork for it. Exactly. Well, like... You know, they earned the right to put these characters together and have the audience invested in them, as opposed to, oh, Iron Man, you're going to be drafted into the Avengers movie, too. No, but as, work that ask, ask DC, or ask the Universal Dark Universe with the mummy. It works out great. Yeah, I was about great. to say how, the, how that goes. <laughs> no, that was, but that was the point I was making. No, yeah. However, uh, in the Shazam film... It was really cool to see that the other DC heroes, it, it shows that even in that universe, the heroes are honored such that they have their own toys. That was really fun. That is cool. neat. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Although, but to be anyhow. fair, in this universe, Superman, I mean, I know it wasn't his fault, but he didn't help. He leveled Metropolis, he basically. <laughs> and, like, well, I mean, he Would you like to see the action Metropolis. figure of someone who leveled New York? Um, okay, okay. Okay, let's not say. Okay, it would be if someone attacked New York and this guy tried to save him, but in the process did absolutely nothing to stop the damage. And I love Man of Steel. I know I really like Man of Steel. It's a good one, but I just that yeah. It's like there's a lot of people he could well, have saved, and he just didn't. Well, I mean, it was a different take on Superman. Yeah, to begin yeah, with, yeah, I know. So there is that, and also if you want to be like true dimes to dollars, the connection between Metropolis is Chicago, not New York. Really? But anyway. Oh, okay. Yes. I thought Chicago was yeah, Gotham. Is Chicago. I Chicago was the Gotham. No. No, Gotham is New York. Wow, I had this all backwards. <laughs> okay. Yep. Anyway. Yeah, that's why they have the island, dude. Come on. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, Chicago's right off of Lake Michigan, so... Yeah, but this doesn't have an island in the middle of Lake Michigan that's nearly as prominent as the one in, oh, say, Manhattan. Anyway... Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, back to my lesson about don't assume there's a universe. Go Ranger, which was the original Super Sentai series, didn't assume it would become a still-running, pretty much all-consecutively show. Right. So it took lots of approaches to feel out what worked, and they crafted something worth following rather than assuming it would just hit the ground running. Right. Uh, Jacka is very, very brief. It's not. It's only 35 episodes, which compared to the one that came before it, <laughs> more on that in a second right less practical for my writing in particular but long form support from on high would be nice well yeah there are some complex reasons why the longest ever sentai show was followed by the shortest ever would it kill people to be consistent <laughs> i don't know if i've just finished doing the longest I don't know why this is the first I came off. The longest fart ever. My next one's not gonna. I don't won't have the the power left in my gut to make another big one. <laughs> that is the awful metaphor because you're talking about one person's farts as opposed to the product of a bunch of people collaborating on a show. Oh. But okay, we'll go with that. A lot of people contributed to this fart. They all fed me the right beans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cerebral stimulation variety. Yep, yeah, right? and they cleared the room to make sure there were no... <laughs> <laughs> they cleared the savannah after every meal. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes. No, let's, not, let's stop that before Disney sues. So... <laughs> <laughs> it was only one line. Anyway. Uh, well, this month... Donald, yes. what about you? What, have you? what are you planning to rip well, off from this month? Well, this month I've been thoroughly researching my stuff for my Tesla Knot story. Which I forgot early. See, I've been uh, early episodes. I'm like, oh, I've been trying to hide what my next story will be. But then I remembered, like a couple episodes earlier, I'm like, oh, I'm just saying it's probably gonna be Tesla. So I'm like, oh, well, okay, well, I guess I'm just open then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you could have changed your mind. You reserve the right to, right? Yeah, I guess and, I still by the could. Way, for... By the way, listeners, by the way, don't be fooled. Tesla knots is entirely about Edison. Yes. <laughs> You know, I like what you think passes as humor. It's it's endearing in a way. <laughs> like, <laughs> nah, that's pretty good. Okay, so. <laughs> All right, so but after thoroughly researching stuff for my Edison Knot story, <laughs> which um, I've been re looking at stuff like the biographies of Nikola Tesla's life. Like there's this one called The Wizard, which is kind of nice. Not non-related to the movie uh, that, that was a Nintendo commercial back in the 80s. <laughs> but... Um, I wouldn't know of it, so... Oh, well, Star Trek did a review of it. I thought you saw it, but okay. No. 
I haven't paid attention to all of the nostalgia critics. Oh, I mean, it was like an older one, so it was back when I was more following him. Anyway, okay, so oh. um, anyway, so the wizard, it's it's that's what's called because he was often called like that because of the how cool his tech was at the time, and they were like, "Whoa, how could you do this?" Yeah. And it's like it's science, but of course, to the dumb muggles around, he's like, "Oh, it's magic." <laughs> But it's basically it's all about like it's not just about tech and technology are the same thing, right, Thor? Right. Well, like exactly. No, Thor had it right. He he knew what he was talking about. Yeah. But um, and speaking of lightning, but not about right, Thor, um, about Tesla. <laughs> yep. And speaking of uh, lightning, guys. Um, no, it's about Benjamin Franklin. Uh, wow, there's a <laughs> lot of lightning people back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that Tesla was so big on the whole lightning piece as opposed to just the electricity piece. Yeah, I guess that's more... Know. That's it's not just lightning in particular. Yeah, okay, fine. Okay, anyways. Uh, <laughs> stuff like biographies about Nikola Tesla's life. It's like how he acted, like what he believed, what his skills were as an inventor, which were great, and as a businessman, which were not right. <laughs> well, <laughs> and uh, other stuff like that. It's like it's cool like to see how sure. he acted as a person rather than just seeing all the cool stuff his tech did, you know? There's not really much to mention well, about I ripping mean, off. It's just, you know, stuff they'll use in one form or another of this upcoming book. Uh, so, yay! <laughs> well, I mean, depends on how much they model themselves after Tesla. These titular Tesla knots, how do they model themselves after Tesla? Do they strive to be the same kind of person he was? In which case, that personality quirk comes into play. Right. Obviously, we're not carbon copies of your role model, regardless of what you try to do. But, yeah. you know... It's something that there are things worth emulating, and there are some things you find to be not worth emulating. Right. So it might be a good source of uh, not conflict per se, but like character motion, right, right. progression, right? If that makes sense. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds so, yeah. That sounds that sounds not? nice. Uh, I mean, you might as well. Right. Actually, no. You know what I think about it? I don't. I don't really like the story. I'll start over from scratch. And speaking of which. <laughs> Ah, this is the humor I've been missing over the last ah, couple of weeks. Just close your eyes and bathe in it. Oh, that sounded dirty. Okay. Bathe in... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Anyways. Um, Revising the story so from scratch. Our new, our new set for this time is talking about revision. Oh, uh, so fun. Both in large... Both, both writ large, writ small... Uh, right middle. talking about individual scenes a little bit too right we'll talk more about that obviously and because you're you know you've seen this i don't know why we always take so long to do the big reveals because it's not like our listeners don't have the title oh i'd like actually no i've installed this uh, i've installed this handy new thing that the i had to pro it took a long while to program this but there's like a curtain that covers the title and as soon as the the audio it covers the title until we reveal it the <laughs> curtains pull open and we're like, whoa! Nah, I can see why that took a long time to program. Anyway, it's an extreme way to fix a story. Well, oh, first of I all, mean, we should mention, so we're talking about revision. In this version, in this episode, which I guess you can see from the title, we're talking oh, about sorry. one version of revision, which is just revising the story from scratch. We'll talk about other types of revisions uh, later on in other episodes. But for now, we're starting with the big, the right. big revision, which is just... Yeah, we're talking about the whole redraft process, which is literally crumpling up the paper from the typewriter and then just throwing it into the trash bin because this is the '70s still, right? Because your handwriting was atrocious. My handwriting uh, is anyway. atrocious. Have you seen it? It looks like a child. No, <laughs> like no, no. That, that, that's not the point I was trying to make here, Donald. The I point feel so I was... embarrassed. Like, okay, I, I like I don't mind signing my books for people. Like, I actually, little bragging, I have signed my books for people. But sometimes they want, like, a message on it. I'm like, no, it looks like a 12-year-old wrote it. Like, <laughs> So, get better? Uh, Practice yeah, get good thing. on writing, right? The gaming thing. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, yes. No, but, uh, yeah, so we're talking about redrafting. Uh, it's an extreme way to fix a story or improve upon its ideas. The question is, why would an author take such drastic measures? Why would they do in the first place? You know, obviously throwing out throwing out a whole draft, right? That's a, that's a not a waste by any means, but it's a lot to throw away. Yeah, no, it right? is. I mean, heavens knows, I do so it all the I time. So I think that there but... are a couple of, well, you know, I think there are a couple of things that you know cause an author to take such drastic measures. One of two things. Either they're unhappy with the execution but in love with the idea, <clears throat> right. Megazoic, <laughs> or changing the main idea within the same structure to reflect some changes in your concept. 
Well, actually, also <clears throat> Megazoic sometimes. <laughs> well, to some extent, yes. Of course, that doesn't simply include one... Uh, excuse me, I read that incorrectly, even though I'm looking at my notes right here. What in the world is wrong with me today? Uh, reading is fun. Reading is it? so much fun. This is a reading podcast, not a reading podcast. Well, so I, that's, I'll forgive you. Well, I have to say, they do go hand in hand. Of course, that doesn't include simply no, wanting I never to read tell it better because now you've polished your craft, which <clears throat> also makes right. it <laughs> So much of this is Megazoic, it's insane. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you did do like four different drafts of it so before you finally published yeah. one. So, you know, this is entirely fair play. Mm-hmm. It is. And, uh, well, well, as you can tell with this, I'm un- undoubtedly the master of <laughs> revising the story from scratch. But it's, it's uh... Not necessarily just from, like, I'm unhappy with the execution. I mean, sometimes it is that, but it's mainly due to my preference of updating story ideas as my writing gets better and being unable to let go. Yeah. Um, hence the, oh, um, hey, the, hence the, the ad. That was the reason you chose that awful ad? Yeah. Uh, you're welcome. Yeah, because you or, could I, totally I'm sorry, I should use say, them. I should say thank you. Thank you. The money from that advertising company was truly wonderful. I I used it to buy a gr- uh, to to reimburse my car. Right? <laughs> That's an adult thing to do, right? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, okay. No. Okay. I could I could do better. I could do better. I, I put it back in the bank, and I'm going to live off of the interest. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, okay. all right, that does sound better. I'm such a grown up, You're such a, such and a so that's why I'm going to talk about my dinosaurs with laser gun stories. So. <laughs> um, I was about to say you're such a grown up in your own legend. <laughs> of course, the execution of the ideas are are inevitably better every time when I rewrite Hopefully this. Hopefully, you're getting laser better by doing this. It's not just there. You you do it because yeah, no, you're exactly. getting better, not because you just think the draft is you know crap steaming pile of well uh, can, can it be both sometimes nah, i don't think it's crap i'm just like oh that needs some major improvement but the older versions of megazoic while creative and fun they meandered like crazy sure. with so much filler and nonsensical plot lines just to pat out the word count. Rhea. uh but Rhea, uh <laughs> carcerox uh zocklers <laughs> some bits some bit of Eugeo. I love that we're saying this because it makes zero sense to it our listeners. Make you... Well, I mean, we have talked a little bit about the prior version of Megazoic. I believe we did the what we have once writ thing. And if I remember correctly, please correct me if I'm wrong, Donald, that was episode 13. It was episode 13. Good job. So, yeah, go listen to that. Uh, we do have a little yeah. bit. I mean, it's, it's hard to get into all the details. And obviously that, that episode ended up being aborted midway through, but... Uh, we're right, anyways, the reason right. they bring it up is because all of these things yeah, like, that, yeah. you know, filler well, also like, and... Yeah, but like, with, even with all this filler and other stuff, like, there is potential to the idea, and I wanted to work with that, so I rewrite it. That's what I did, and hopefully I'm done. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you better now. be done. Better you be. published it already. <laughs> no, I, I could still recall all the copies and then be like, nope, here's the real well, even if you recall the copies now that you could not take the ones out of people's hands. I will no actively f- track people down who have bought a copy. <laughs> you know, we have good tracking on our sales here. No, just <laughs> uh, see, this is the humor I've missed. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways. So, if you're telling yourself to rewrite the whole darn draft, you think you're mm-hmm. just going to chuck it out like the baby with the bathwater? Please don't do that. Um, <laughs> oh, what kind of saying is that? God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're getting rid of the whole kit and caboodle, right? Don't uh, the, the phrase, what, what, the actual what, what phrase are you is getting don't these sayings throw, from. <laughs> the, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Just so we're clear, I'm not endorsing this by any means. However, yeah, no, David is a major advocate draft. for throwing a grown-up people out with the bathwater, but not babies. He, he has a line. <laughs> <laughs> I know where to draw the line, Donald. Anyway. Hmm. Um, but, you know, if you throw out your entire draft, it's not worth throwing out everything of that without considering uh, what's good that you did, you know, something you, you want to keep or you know right. you're planning to improve on this thing. Don't throw it all out. However, before you proceed with rewriting, we redrafting this thing, do this. Yes. Breathe. Yes. It's a big undertaking to take too lightly. 
Also, like I mentioned, you do sh you should review your old version to see what you think works best from that. Yeah, because it's exactly. just a redraft, right? It's not a you're not changing concept necessarily. You might be, but you're not always changing yeah, concept. Yeah, so it depends, so but why why take out the things that worked for that concept that you are keeping into a new draft, you know? Right. Honestly, you don't need to reinvent the wheel if you can save the rims. Ah, yes. Yeah, okay, that metaphor, that you, you can that can add to the metaphor. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. So, uh, well, for me, uh, before you proceed, you should justify the decision. What will the story gain out of a retelling? Like, is the original really unsalvageable? Maybe just needs yeah. some finely tuned edits. Like, mm -hmm. like rewriting the whole thing from scratch will take a long, long time. So yeah. make sure you're ready for that kind of commitment. And also, save the original, if only as a keepsake. Like, I still have all the old versions of Megazoke on my computer. At least I think if... I do. Hold on, let me, ch let me check. Okay. While you're checking, Donald, I'm going to ask for your uh, advice. Do you think we should say, and if you want to, just rewrite I don't! Version, no! <laughs> I might have them on Google Drive somewhere. Okay. Let me go check there. Okay. Uh... Guys, I'm really good at my job. I take this very serious. So professional. Um, no, old computer you... stuff. No, wait. I think it's in my old computer. Yeah, okay. There we go. We're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I'm laughing, but it, something similar happened to me recently. I was horrified by the fact I looked at my flash drive and looked everywhere for the fully the fully finished version of Shattered Creek that I did. I finished a draft of that, right? And mentioned right. that. Yeah, yes, I can't yes, that was find good. the back half of that anywhere. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, so I don't know what the heck happened to it, but like, it, it is a serious thing. You do want to keep stuff around. Although, obviously, in this case, mine was not, like, the old version of story I redid. Yeah, no, that's the only version, so you better find it. <laughs> it's the only draft I finished. Yeah. Um, however, you were... But I was going to say, like, if you want to talk about just writing small portions... Wow. Well, okay. You don't want to listen to the next episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, could, that could work. <laughs> I was... You were too busy saying no, and I thought it was you were talking about something else. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's why it took okay. me longer than usual. Anyway, all so, right. Yes, moving on. Here's a question. I'm not already tired, even though it's already the, only the first episode. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Keep telling yourself that, Mister. You're drinking caffeine to help you. <laughs> all right. So, um. Well, I, why do I always end up asking the questions? Dang it. Uh, how soon okay. is how too soon? How soon or... is too soon? Okay, I'll ask the questions because you just go okay. first. Okay. All right. So how soon is too soon slash too late to determine some work needs a full redraft? Or as I tend to call or as you tend to call them because you wrote this. Yes, I did. <laughs> Retools. Yeah, I mean, it is retooling, right? You're yeah. changing a, You're changing quite a few things, but the concept stays the same. Or the characters stay the same. Something is... You know, or sometimes consistent. it neither stays the same. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, then that's not a retool. That's a different concept, isn't it? I guess that's true. You're right. Okay. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, too soon is before you've written a solid amount, though what solid constitutes varies on the work itself. 15 pages into a quote-unquote short story is probably not too soon, but maybe for your planned 4,000-page epic, it might be a mite too early. <laughs> right. Maybe. <laughs> too yeah. late? If it's officially published for audiences beyond your circle of trusted critics, yeah, that's a little too late to rework something. Sorry, Megazoic. No! This is why attempts, I'm committed! This is why attempts, I hate it! <laughs> this is why attempts are called drafts, but those are called books, in which case they're out of your hands and into someone else's. Right. I mean, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm just I'm trying to deal with the fact that I'm committed. Nah, it's fine. I'm actually very satisfied with uh, the current version. <laughs> Um, but my opinion, actually, uh, I'm, it's never too soon because sometimes the beginning part of your story just doesn't work. You can re-edit it rather than rehaul it completely, but sometimes you really just need to start over. Now that doesn't mean mm. you can't save some of it for other use or take other second sections and rearrange where they go, but whatever you think needs to change, you can change. I mean, you you're do the writer, have executive yeah. authority over your thing because you are the yeah. author. That's where that word yep. comes from, I believe. Yeah. But like, what are the if if we are want if someone's to do this, like, what are the uh, first things to consider changing when committing to a full redraft? The setting, 
don't connect it to the same town and that'll help your brain disconnect it from what came before. Yeah. You don't go into a redraft expecting the new audience to know the old, right? So don't let that clutter your new version. Beyond the setting, I think that changing the perspective, so from first person, third omniscient, or limited, whatever, is an easy way to demarcate the new from the old. Alternatively, plot is a bit harder to, you know, rework, but it's more necessary for a fuller retool or redraft. Yeah, that's pretty necessary, I'd say. (laughs) I said more necessary. So maybe just a tad, I don't know. <laughs> but, maybe just a little bit, jeez. Like, as well as as well as a uh, plot, like I have, you know, setting, tone, and characters. Uh, those are like those are the big things to consider. Like when when rewriting sure. Megazoic before, when rewriting, <laughs> it often came with a big change. Like one was from sci-fi to fantasy, and the next mm-hmm. one was back to sci-fi with a brand new cast of characters. Like have yeah. a big enough of a change to justify the need for a new rehaul of the idea. You were like, saying think before about, you even do the redraft or retool that you do need to justify it, so that's obviously a crucial piece. Right, like, like have a big enough of a change, like, like to think about why it is you decided to change it in the first place, and like how you can avoid that the first time around. Like, don't make the same mistake that you did before, so. Well, and this is why I said breathe, because, you know, some people can be quite capricious. They decide on a whim and change their minds on a whim, and, like, if you're going to actually retool, this is a huge time com- time commitment. This is a huge undertaking. So why not give yourself the space to say, wait, maybe I don't need to retool this entire draft. Maybe I just need to do a section. <laughs> and speaking of which, we'll get to that. <laughs> well, I mean, we already did that. Uh, but, like, yeah, so I know, guess play that fog horn again. <laughs> You're just adding edits for yourself at this point. Yeah, um, I know. Hey, well, I'm not tired. We are actually, we are, we are actually uh, pretty good so far on those. But um, yeah, you know, uh, theoretically, but, if it's just one thing, if it's just one thing, unless that thing is huge, like this character needs to not be in the next version, or this plot just should not happen. Yeah, you know, no, definitely. I don't think suited for a I don't rewrite think... as opposed to a retool, but you know. Yeah, no, I think if that's the change, then definitely don't. You don't have to rewrite the whole thing. You're not that much of a perfectionist, surely. Yeah, well, I hope not. But coming from the person who wrote Megazoic, how many times over how many years? <laughs> hey, that's not to be fair because of perfectionism. It was just because I liked yeah. it. I didn't, want to, I didn't want to let it go. It was. It was. Uh, as well as commitment issues, I have letting go issues. I'm just an all around mess. <laughs> There, there are comments that some meaner person would make. I won't. <laughs> ah, well, it's a good thing you're here to say them, then, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, anyways, uh, uh, anything else to add about retooling? Ah, uh, no, nah, I don't. I don't really like what we've done here. Let's just redo the whole thing. Oh wait, no, I, that's that's not how I do it. I'm making a funny laugh match. Laugh. <laughs> The one time you ask me to and I don't. Go figure that out. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> hey, there you go. Thank you. It worked a little bit. There I'm kidding. Go. I'm kidding. Uh, okay. That's it for this now, week, listeners. I think. Sure. Maybe. I don't know. Well, I was, <laughs> okay. uh, I was, I was just going to throw out the last the last bit that I can think of is... That, oh, yeah, sure. Um, with, a re, with a retool, you know, you have the ultimate authority over whether yeah. you need to do it or not but right, exactly. it might be worth soliciting another opinion as well i yeah, get like a second opinion sure because you have i mean yes obviously the final decision rests in your hands but maybe somebody that you trust says that it's good as is or maybe i mean heavens knows to change rather than the whole thing heavens knows you've i've you've definitely been like matt you don't need to rewrite this stop or Matt, you don't need to add more. Stop. <laughs> yes, I have. Not that you've necessarily, but you know, the decision rests with you, the author. But like, right. I can think of, I can think of one mutual acquaintance we had online who um, always supported every version, no matter all the changes it went through. But I can't help but wonder if that person preferred a certain version. Maybe. Oh, you're talking about. Uh, you're talking about uh, the New Zealand guy. Yes. Uh, he actually much preferred the clone version over the fantasy version. 
Yeah, as I said. He's told me that before, so. As as I said, you know, he likes... And what does clone or fancy mean, mean, listeners? You'll never know. Well, I mean, you could go back. I don't know if we get that far on it in 13, but if it's there, I don't remember. Listen yeah, for yourselves, I don't, yourselves, I don't either. With that right. said, that's it for retools. Uh, if you have yes. questions, you know, please get in touch with us. Matt D, that's with two Ts, at MatthewDonaldCreator.com. Use your own email system or the contact page at the website. Yes. And if also, you there want- are professional media stuffs as well, so you can go ahead and do that. Well, also, I wanted to say, like, like you always say, that if you have a question for one of us specifically, oh, uh, please <laughs> uh, say which one as we share Match D in common. You're well, I think correct. that they off, they probably would anyways. Maybe not, though. I don't know. I'd probably. hope so, <laughs> unless they were directing it to one of our ex- our special guest hosts, in which case, you know, I, I We'll direct mean, it to them. Um, also, we'll, we'll redirect it as necessary. Also, I feel like we, we, we call each other Donald and David during this. We don't say Matt D and Matt D, <laughs> so... True. We do we do a fairly good job of that, although I have we have had a couple Matt sneak in there a couple of times. I mean that's how we know each other though. And also also my uh sister's fi- uh not fiance, they're married. My sister's husband's name is Matt. There's too many Matt's in the world. Okay. Well, as long as you're not encouraging a culling of Matt's, then I think we're okay. I think I encourage that. Uh, in an if you want to follow Anyways, Matthew if you Donald follow me professionally, per- yes. Follow me at Matthew Donald Creator on Facebook, at Matthew Donald 64 on Twitter, and Matthew Donald 64 on Instagram. Why 64? Because that's how many pounds I can bench press. It's not very impressive, especially for a man of my size. But I'd like to think I exercise the only muscle that matters, the brain. We'll let you keep living that fantasy. Anyways, <laughs> until next week when we're back with more about revising, etc. Please yep. keep writing, listeners. and We'll keep. be back with you in a week. Until then, I'm Matt David. I'm Matt Donald. And we'll see you next time on The Rit with the show where us two twits talk about ritting. Yeah. I'm not tired. <laughs> the Rit with...